Now, Moses and Deuteronomy. We're going to connect up these two things. And uh, this is going to be um, kind of, we've talked about the land in kind of existential terms, in terms of meaning. This is going to be more academic now, official academic. Moses and Deuteronomy. Who wrote the book of Deuteronomy? We saw Deuteronomy as covenant renewal. Moses passing the baton on to Joshua. The covenant is being renewed. Joshua is being reminded of the things that are, he's responsible for in the covenant. Does anybody remember this? The old JEDP theory, okay? Deuteronomy is big in this JEDP theory. The JEDP theory says Moses did not write the Pentateuch, but instead you had a J writer who liked the name Jehovah, so he wrote with Jehovah or Yahweh, and so they called it the J document. He was written about 850 BC, which is about 150 years after the time of David. So this is long after Moses is gone, 500 years after Moses. The J writer, you had the E writer, and he write, wrote the part of the Pentateuch. This is how the Pentateuch, this is how critics see that the Bible was put together. The E writer wrote in the name Elohim. He liked the name Elohim, and he favored that name, and so he usually calls God by the name Elohim. He writes about 750. Then what happens is J and E get put together into a JE document. So these two documents or source documents, are put together then in J.E. And then Deuteronomy stands by itself. Deuteronomy dates from about 620 or 612 B.C., and this is remembrance of Josiah. King Josiah, quote, finds the book of the law in the temple. But everybody knows he didn't find the book of the law. Josiah had the book of the law written with Moses' name on it. So this is what they call the pious fraud the pious fraud. In other words, Josiah wanted to do good, good uh, reformation kinds of things. He wanted to reform and, and make the people go back to God. And so what he did was he put out a fraud in Moses' name. So he says, we're going to write this document. We're going to sign it like it's Moses' document. We're going to find this book of the law. And then Josiah is going to do the reformation in his time and bring people back to the Lord. And so that's where the book of Deuteronomy came from. And so they call that a pious fraud. Can you see what that means? Okay, so Josiah wrote this book of Deuteronomy. Now, by the way, does the Bible say that? The Bible says who's writing the book of Deuteronomy? Most of it. Moses, okay? So Moses is there writing and talking and stuff like this. So this is basically critical there. By the way, is there anything in external evidence? Is there any external evidence that supports any of this? Is there any archaeological evidence of any of these sources? Not a shred. And as a matter of fact, some of the archaeological evidence, like P, the priestly writer, 450 BC, we found that in Numbers chapter 6, a priestly document was, we've actually got a copy from 700 BC, 200 and 300 years before this. So we've actually got archaeological evidence that can, you know, contradicts this. So this is basically how critics coming out of the 19th century into the 20th century said that this is how the Pentateuch got built up. And that Moses, it was not really Moses who wrote the Pentateuch, but it was this, these pious frauds that kind of wrote in Moses' name uh, to do this stuff. Now, should we be able to tell the difference between a document that was written in 620 B.C. and Moses? Well, Moses was back about what? 1,200, 1,400? There's about six or 800 years between. Do document types change over six or 800 years? Do document types, the way, the format you use, do they change over 800 years? Well, check this out, okay? They say Josiah finds the book of the law. They said no, and this is what Chronicles 34, 33 says, Josiah found the book of the law, Deuteronomy, and that's what the Bible says, but the critics say no, Josiah wrote it. Now, Hittite treaties, let's talk about treaties. We've got Hittite treaties, but by, by the way, when do the Hittite treaties date from? 1200 BC, is that very close to the time of Moses? If you take a late date, that's from the very time of Moses, okay? So the Hittite treaties, these, these treaties come from this period right in the time of Moses. A treaty form has a preamble. What's a preamble? The preamble says, I am Supliuma, king of Hattusis, and I am the great king. I rule over from sea to sea, and I am the big man. Okay, so the preamble tells who the king is and his domain. Okay, so the preamble tells the name of the king who's going to do this document. The historical prologue. The next section in these treaties is the historical prologue. The historical prologue tells the benevolences of the king. It says, 
I am the great Supliuma, and I helped your father. When he ran out of water one time and he was going to die, I helped him. A lion attacked him, and I killed the lion. He ran out of food, and I gave food to his children. So I am the good king. So the historical prologue tells of the benevolences of the king, the good, wonderful, kind things that the king does. And by the way, when the king starts telling you how kind and good he is, What's coming next, okay? Is this a setup? This is a setup, okay? And so what you get next are the stipulations. And the king says, hey, because I've been really kind and good to you, you need to follow my law. What's my first law? You must pay what? Taxes, okay? By the way, let me all hear you say that. You must pay what? Taxes, okay? And by the way, are you guys going to be paying taxes for the rest of your life? Because we got a $14 trillion debt on your back and stuff. I will be dead. So you will, uh, I'm serious. I, I, I honestly, when I look at you guys and my kids and stuff, I just look and I just, my shoulders go down because it's just like, I mean, you guys don't, and it's good you don't know how badly you guys are messed over. This is, this, no, this is really bad. I, I just, I, I, Anyways, let me get out of there. Stipulations, okay? The king wants what? His stipulations. Pay me money, obey my laws, obey my laws, hear my law. You know, you got to pay traffic tolls when you go on the throughway. You got to, you know, you got to pay, uh, you know, taxes. You got to be obedient. You got to be loyal to me. You have to do all these things. The king gives his stipulations. After he gets, now, by the way, when you've got a, when you've got a law, a covenant, do you have to have witnesses? By the way, what's a covenant people make today? In a marriage, in a marriage, do you have the witnesses to the marriage? Yeah. And so there's witnesses. And this is really a cool one. In the Bible, there'll be witnesses. Like when you have a marriage, oh, actually, I performed a marriage when my, my, my son got married and stuff. And then, therefore, I'm, I sign off as one of the witnesses and stuff, as a minister and stuff. The witnesses, who does God call as his witnesses? Who's God going to call as his witness? God calls heaven and earth to witness. And so, no, it's really a cool thing because there's nobody that can kind of witness God kind of thing. So he calls heaven and earth to witness against him, the mountains, that kind of thing. So then at the end of the covenant, there's blessings and cursings, blessings if you obey, cursings if you disobey. Now, okay. Now we want to make a shift here. These are the Hittite treaties. 1200 BC, right around the time of Moses. Check this out. Assyrian treaties, Assyrian treaties date from what? 700 BC, is that very close to the time of Josiah? The Assyrians were brutal. They ruled by fear. For example, you entered one of their cities, they had a pile of skulls. As you entered the city, they had a pyramid of skulls. What was the nonverbal message that was trying to communicate? If you disobey them, question, where does your head end up? Now, by the way, is that pretty convincing argumentation? Yeah. Okay. I've been in the British Museum. If you ever get to London, you want to go to the British Museum. You walk in the British Museum, and the first thing right there, it's incredible, they have the Rosetta Stone. Not, not on a computer Rosetta Stone. They actually have the Rosetta Stone. You walk up to this thing. You walk in further, and you see that the... the the Assyrian Empire, you see some of the things of the Assyrian Empire, and you see a stake sticking up like that, and you see a human being on the stake flailing, and you see the stake driven right through them. Question, is that cool? What's the message that's trying to communicate? If you mess with us, you end up what? We have a little stake out, right? Only you're on the stake, okay? So these Assyrians rule. By the way, how do you know that? When Jonah is told, Jonah is told, God says, Jonah, I want you to go to Assyria, to Nineveh. Go to Nineveh, Jonah. Jonah says what? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, what's the message God tells him? Tell the people of Nineveh to repent. Jonah says, yeah, right, okay? I don't want my head on the pile, God. I'm out of here. I'm going to go find some fish and take a ride, okay? So, okay, now, the Assyrian treaty, here's how the treaties go. The two treaties are different forms. They both, the Assyrian and the Hittite, but the Assyrian treaty comes from the time of Josiah. Do you see? It's 700, Josiah was 620. So that's the time of Josiah. This is the time of Moses. The two forms are different forms. They both have a preamble. The historical prologue, the Hittite treaty has a historical prologue telling of all the king's benevolences, the Assyrian treaty does not have a historical prologue. Why doesn't the, why doesn't the Assyrian treaty have a 
historical prologue because they don't tell of the benevolence as they did because they terrorized people. So there's no historical prologue in the Assyrian Treaty. Then you go down. Stipulations. Both the treaties have stipulations, laws that you're supposed to do for the king. Witnesses. Both treaties have witnesses. Both treaties have witnesses. And then check this out. Blessings. The Hittite Treaty has blessings, but the Assyrian Treaty has no blessings. By the way, does that make sense? The Assyrians are what? They're brutal. They say, hey, you obey me. I'm not going to bless you. You deserve to obey me. You just must obey me. I'm not going to bless you. But they have what? Instead, they have curses. Both of them have curses. Now, I ask you this. If you are going to tell whether a document was written at 1200 BC, a treaty, or at 700 BC, what are the two places you're going to look to distinguish these documents? If it has a historical prologue, it's what, early or late? Early. If it's missing a historical prologue, it's late. If it has blessings, if it has blessings, it's early. If it has no blessings, it's late. The book of Deuteronomy. Check this out. Does Deuteronomy have a preamble? Yes, it does. Chapter 1, God identifies himself as the great king. And by the way, this is the cool thing. God identifies himself as the great king. He is the God is the great king. Historical prologue, chapter 1 to chapter 3, God tells of all the benevolent things that he's done for his people. Does God have many of those things? Bringing them out of Egypt, providing manna from heaven for them, providing quail to eat and things like that. So there is a historical prologue. Are there stipulations in the book of Deuteronomy? There's general stipulations, Ten Commandments, things like that, love the Lord your God, and there's also specific stipulations, and that's actually fits, that fits the Hittite treaties to a key. By the way, this stuff is, there's a guy up at Gordon-Conwell Seminary, his name is Meredith Klein. He's the guy that compared these two treaty forms and showed that they're totally different, that they're different at these two places at least. They both have witnesses. Deuteronomy has witnesses. Question, does Deuteronomy have both blessings and cursings? Yes, it does. It has blessings and it has a historical prologue. Therefore, Deuteronomy, was it written at 700 or was it written in 1200 B.C.? 1200 B.C. Can you see the argument? These two document forms are different at the place of the historical prologue and the blessings. Deuteronomy has a historical prologue and the blessings, therefore fits perfectly with the 1200 B.C. document, which is from the time of Moses, not from the time of Josiah. Is this a strong argument? This is a strong argument, okay? Now question, will critics be able to take this apart? Yeah, because the critics are going to take everything apart, but this is a really pretty strong argument for Deuteronomy. Now, general stipulations, and with this we'll quit. Next time, all of you, I will teach you the Ten Commandments, and you won't even have to sweat it. You'll know the Ten Commandments. All of you will know the Ten Commandments just like that, okay? So next time, we'll be up for the Ten Commandments. Judges and Ruth for next time.